This is Land of Havilah, Psalm 144. It's 15 verses. It's a contemplation of the glories that await us when we're able to defeat our enemies, God helping us. In David's case, his enemies were foreign invaders. In our case, quote, our wrestling's not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world's rulers of the darkness of this age, and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, Ephesians 6.12. Foreign enemies in ancient times wanted to kill, take spoils, and leave the nation in a weakened condition so they couldn't retaliate. Satan is the same. Jesus called him a thief and robber who, quote, only comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come that they may have life and have it abundantly, John 10.10. We see both sides of the coin in this psalm, the losses the enemy would inflict on us on one side, and on the other side, abundant life when God teaches us to defeat the enemy. Verse 1, by David, Blessed be Yahweh, my rock, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to battle, my loving kindness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Comment, this psalm is strictly about waging war, except for the next two verses. These are a side note about the insignificance of man in the vast scope of creation, except that God pays attention to him. Verse 3, Yahweh, what is man that you care for him, or the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a breath, his days are like a shadow that passes away. Comment now back to the idea of waging war. David will call down Yahweh to wage war against his enemies. Verse 5. Part your heavens, Yahweh, and come down. Touch the mountains and they'll smoke. Throw out lightning and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters, out of the hands of foreigners whose mouths speak deceit, whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I'll sing a new song to you, God. On a ten-stringed lyre, I'll sing praises to you. You are he who gives salvation to kings, who rescues David, his servant, from the deadly sword. Rescue me and deliver me out of the hands of foreigners whose mouths speak deceit, whose right hand is the right hand of falsehood. Comment, the final four verses coming up are a description of a nation protected by God from foreign invaders. There will be peace, growth, and prosperity. Verse 12. Then our sons will be like well-nurtured plants, our daughters like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns are full, filled with all kinds of provision. Our sheep produce thousands and ten thousands in our fields. Our oxen will pull heavy loads. There is no breaking in and no going away and no outcry in the streets. Happy are the people who are in such a situation. Happy are the people whose God is Yahweh. Comment in verse 14, there's no breaking in, meaning foreign invaders won't break into the country or into the walls of the cities. There's no going away, meaning no one's being taken away captive. And there's no outcry in the streets, which is, of course, what happens when foreign invaders come in. They kill, loot, rape, and take captives, and, of course, as a result, there's an outcry in the streets. Our enemies, the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places, are no joke. We have ourselves to protect, our families, our livelihoods, our long-term success and stability, our hope for an eternal future. May God teach us to wage war against our enemies who would deny us all that. Ephesians 6 is a good start. Psalm 145 is next.